And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to ta be taking a look at a game from AEG. Uh, this is a card game that they released at Essen, uh, and it's called Guildhall, one of my top ten games of last year. Now, this game plays two to four, it plays very quickly, uh, and it's a card-based game in which you're going to be trying to collect sets of cards, but as you collect those cards, they get better and better in terms of the abilities they provide when you play a new one. But when you get too many, or when you get the maximum amount, they turn over, they become useless in terms of providing abilities, but they give you the chance to buy victory points. So real quick, we'll take a look at how that balance works out and what the components of the game is like, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll get my final thoughts on Guildhall as a whole. So here you can see the components for Guildhall. Now this is a card game, uh, and one that's going to use a different style of play than I've seen in most card games before. In this deck of cards, you're going to have different professions. Uh, there are five, six different professions in the game. You have assassins, weavers, dancers, traders, historians, and farmers. There are also f five different colors of card in the game. You'll see there's red, green, purple, blue, and yellow, and then I have another green here to show you the last profession. But so there are six different professions, five different colors, uh, and each profession comes in each of the five colors. So there will be a purple, a yellow, a blue, a red, and a green historian in the deck, and there's multiple of those in the deck. Now, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get nine cards. They can look at them, uh, and they'll decide they want to discard some of them, because there's no point in having two red historians. You can only keep one red historian in your guild hall throughout the game. So if you have two, you may as well get rid of one of them at some point. But you'll get nine cards. You can discard as many as you want, draw back up to nine, and then you're going to choose three of the cards in your hand to go into what's called your guild hall, which is an area where you're going to keep cards that you can activate throughout the game by playing other cards of the same profession, but not the same color. So maybe, for example, I put a historian in my guild hall, and I put a trade in my guild hall and I put a, um, a farmer in, oh, yep, the farmer in my guild hall. Uh, at this point I'm going to have six cards in my hand and we will start the game. Everyone will do this and then you'll start the game. Now the objective of the game is to win these victory point cards here. You'll see these are worth four points, two points, five, four, and two. Uh, they go all the way up to nine points. The, the difference is that some of these cards cost less. Each of these costs one completed stack of a profession. That would be one of each color, for example, of farmer. So five colors of farmer, all in your guild hall. You'd turn them over, they become a stack, and you can use that to buy cards. Now, when you buy them, a five-point card, for example, costs one stack, gives you five points, but does nothing. Whereas some of these lesser cards, for example, the two-point card when you buy it, says that you can actually take a card from somebody else's guild hall and put it in yours. Uh, or this one uh, says that you can take multiple cards uh, up to five into your hand. So uh, they, they have different abilities uh, that are going to you know, benefit you more or less throughout the game, but the idea is that buying a cheaper card will get you a better benefit, whereas getting a more expensive card will get you more points. Anyhow, on your turn, you're going to be able to play cards or buy victory point cards uh, or draw cards, discard and draw cards, and those are the three possible actions you can take, but you get two actions per turn. So you're going to have your hand of cards, and the way these cards work is you're going to play one that doesn't match anything you've played in terms of profession or color or anything that's in your guild hall in terms of the color and same profession, so I can't play another green farmer now that I have a farmer in my guild hall. When you play a card, it's going to activate uh, the abilities on the card. You'll see here there's a 0, a 2, and a 4 ability. And this counts the number of the same type of profession you have in your guild hall. So I would look in my guild hall. I have no assassins. So if I play this card, I'm going to get the 0 ability on the assassin, which says uh, this little black means someone else's guild hall. That's one card, and this means discard. So I can discard any one card from someone else's guild hall uh, if I were to play this card. If I wanted to play another card, maybe I played a traitor. Uh, the trader's abilities here, uh, you can see his lowest level one says I can trade one card from my own guild hall to someone else's. So I can take one of my own cards and trade it for someone else's, making sure that there are never any exact duplicates of any cards uh, in anyone's guild hall throughout the game. Once I finish playing these cards, uh, which is my two actions for the turn, I'm going to move all of the cards into my guild hall, and I'm going to keep them in like stacks. So now I have two traders, a farmer, historian, and an assassin in my guild hall. And that would be the end of my turn, and the next player would go on to their turn. Now, maybe they don't like their hand. As one of their two actions, they can actually choose to discard cards from their hand and draw back up to their hand size, which is going to be six. So maybe they discard that, and they draw back up to their hand of six. That's one action, and then they can continue on uh, playing cards or 
Uh, using completed stacks, if they had all five traders, they could flip this over and use this stack to buy a card out here in order to get the victory points. Now, you're going to keep on in this way until somebody earns 20 points, either by buying these cards or through various other methods. The only other thing you need to see in this game, other than the fact that as you accumulate more of a profession, it's going to get better, is what the professions do. So real quick, I'm going to cover all of the professions, uh, get you a general idea of what they do, and then you can figure out the rest of the game for yourself. But no, uh, it's really about accurately or, or most efficiently getting these cards into your area, getting different stacks of cards, trying to keep them out and get the best abilities out of them, and then eventually timing it so that you can flip them over and use them as a currency to buy victory points. And some of these victory points will cost two stacks of cards rather than one, but will give you many more victory points. So, the cards you haven't seen here. We have a dancer. This one says, for each dancer you have in your guild hall, you get to draw a card into your hand, and additionally, it will give you one extra action. So instead of having two actions on your turn, you'll get three. This card gets better the more dancers you have in your hall. You have the farmer. The farmer's way to earn victory points without buying cards. He says if you have one other farmer in your hall, note you don't count the farmer you're playing, you get one victory point in the way of these, card, or these coins. If you get all the way up to three farmers, he will provide you two coins each time that you play a farmer out that doesn't match one of the ones in your guild hall. We have the assassins, like I showed you earlier. At level zero, meaning you have no other assassins, he kills one card. At two other assassins, he kills two cards, but they have to be different from an opponent's guild hall. And at four, he can kill two of the same card, or any two cards from opponent's guild halls, into the discard pile. We have <coughs> the historian. The historian is a way to go back and get cards from the discard pile, and it says at zero you can get one card from the top of the discard pile, but at two you can look through the discard pile and choose one card, and at four you can look through the discard pile and choose two to add directly to your guild hall. Pause there because I'm missing some cards. I did trader. One, two, three, four. No, I didn't do trader. You didn't do trader. That's it. No, there's six. One, two, three, four. You had all Weaver. Okay. All right. Huh? I never stopped it. Okay. The Weaver is going to allow you to take cards directly from your hand and place them into your guild hall. So this way you don't have to play them to the table first, which is a way to play, uh, for example, to increase the number of cards you have in your guild hall and then play another profession of the same type to get a better benefit. So this one says uh, you can hex. Oh, okay. So this one says at zero weavers, you can put one card directly into your guild hall from your hand. At two, you can put two directly from your hand into the guild hall and take one back from your guild hall. And at four, you can put as many as you want directly from your hand into your guild hall and take back two into your hand. Finally, we have the trader, which I kind of, you know, kind of names itself. Uh, at zero, you can trade one card for one from your opponents from their guild hall. At two, uh, sorry, yeah, at two, you can trade two cards from your, hand, from your guild hall into their guild hall, and vice versa. And at four, you can trade an entire stack from your guild hall to their guild hall. Now, that may be a stack of one card for a stack of four cards, because stacks of five are never tradable. Uh, and you may benefit with getting three additional cards just by playing a trader. So that's all of the cards. As I said, the goal is to collect full piles of them, trade those piles in for victory points, and the first person to get to 20 victory points between cards and coins will be the winner. Well, there you have it. If you couldn't already tell from, well, either my 2012 video of my top games or from the intro to this video, this is one of my favorite games from the last year. Uh, and the reason is, is that it provides something relatively new. It just has a little bit different feel uh, than most card games. I like the set collection aspect. Uh, I like the, the fact that, you know, as you collect more cards, the abilities get better. And you may want to try and not finish a specific set in order to keep the ability. Uh, but, you know, Eventually, it's worth turning that set into a five-point set, turning it over and using it to get victory points because, well, that's how you win the game. Uh, so it has that nice balance between getting a nice set of cards to use in order to uh, manipulate how the game plays, but then having to sacrifice those abilities in order to finish the game. Um, I think that AEG has a, a good hit here. I think it's easily expandable, one that I'm excited to see some expansions for in the future, uh, but has a lot of strategy in the base game. Uh, so if that sounds interesting to you, check out Guildhall from AEG. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. What?